systems thinking in En-ROADS, all as part of your training in advanced facilitation. How to help participants in an En-ROADS exercise appreciate the tightly coupled interdependent system that is this energy, economic, land, equity, carbon cycle, agriculture, climate system. How to see it as an interdependent whole, how to help people both uh, understand how to make good climate policy and equity policy, but also internalize that sense of how things are related in complex systems overall. All right, the first tip I'm going to give you is to always take the time to explain why the simulator is doing what it's doing. When people ask, hey, why did it do that? You never say, because the model says so. There are other models that are black box models that are intended to work that way. That's not En-ROADS. That's not system dynamics, which is the method that we use to create and engage people with these simulators. Take the time to explain why. That's the moment when you're investing in people's capacity for systems thinking. The other one is to point out the really cool dynamics that are revealed by En-ROADS. There's a list of six that I'm going to go through, and I'm going to use a little jargon from the field of systems thinking. If you want, go read up on the field, uh, and uh, you may know some of these terms a little bit better. But here they are. Here are my top six. Number one, compensating feedback, sometimes called policy resistance. These are balancing feedback loops that push back on our efforts to make things better in the system. For example, you notice when you promote zero carbon thorium fission and this new energy supply grows, we have perhaps less coal and gas. However, along the way, you saw that it pushed energy prices down and pushed energy demand up, kind of undoing some of the positive effects of the contribution of this uh, of zero carbon thorium fission. It is a compensating feedback in the complex system. Number two, interdependencies. And by the way, all of these dynamics you can watch and learn much more about in detail and see actual demonstrations in the simulator by going to the simulation dynamics, En-ROADS dynamics set of videos. Okay, interdependencies. So interdependencies. In some places, one action needs another action to succeed to be really significant. Electrify alone in En-ROADS, just electrify, you don't get much of a climate benefit. However, electrify and decarbonize the grid with the carbon price, with renewables, with something like that, together they have a really large impact. Number three, co-benefits, where you take some action and you get other things that are positive in other sectors of the overall system. So one of them, coal. Reduce coal and then watch the positive benefits on air quality, which then trickle through to equity and even over to health and other areas like that if you make sure that you capture those co-benefits in the policy. Another one that has surprised me is policies that reduce natural gas, reduce carbon dioxide, and of course that helps. But then also in the methane world, you get a lot less uh, emissions of methane because there's less leakage of methane because the overall gas industry is much smaller. Number four, the power of reinforcing feedback loops. One really good example, the way an action builds on an action and the bigger it gets, the faster it grows. One good example of this is with uh, the reinforcing loop growth of renewable energy. There's a whole video on this. We call it the economies of scale, where the more wind and solar you get, the cheaper it gets. Therefore, the more investment, the more you get, the cheaper it gets around and around in an exponential growth feedback loop called economies of scale. Number five, the effect 
of delays and the importance of delays in these systems. Two really good examples. Go play with afforestation. It takes so long to plant the trees and grow the trees and remove the carbon from the atmosphere that the overall impact on the climate is relatively modest. In the same way with new zero carbon thorium fission, it takes a long time to ramp up this industry. And so therefore, there's a less of an impact because of those delays. Number six, the effect of accumulations or what we call stocks and flows in system dynamics terms. Two really good examples. There's a whole video on capital stock turnover. It takes a long time for an alternative to fossil fuel based energy like renewable energy to help out because you've got to get out the old technology and then bring in the new. And that old technology lives in that case for 35 years. In the case of uh, electrified vehicles, it's 15 years to get the old internal combustion engines out, bring in the new. Therefore, there are long delays in this capital stock turnover driven system. The second is a good old carbon bathtub. And it is a really powerful explanation about how accumulations really matter when you're trying to understand why is it that you need to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide so much just to get the overall concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere to remain flat. It shows you why we need to bring such radical reductions into carbon dioxide. Now some tips for using systems thinking in your games and workshops and other events. The first is to use multi-solving as a guide. There are several videos on multi-solving as part of this series. And just think of it as systems thinking applied to this climate, equity, health, jobs, economic, water system. It's a really helpful way to think about a systems thinking view on many of the related issues that you might care about with climate, sustainability, and equity together. Another tip, correct sloppy thinking with vigor. Be nice, but when someone says something that is wrong, when they say, hey, why did the brown line go down? And they give an answer that is clearly incorrect. Don't just roll with it in the spirit of being nice. Use that moment to say, no, that's not why that happened. Why that happened is this. That is a moment to help people be better systems thinkers. Another tip is to work the simulator out of its job. You are investing in people's mental models. You're going to want them to leave your event with that understanding that's embedded in the computer model as much as possible within people's heads. Work your way out of it by having them start to think and continue to think more and more with the model itself. Use structured thinking like the chiographs. One important component of systems thinking is to break down issues into their components in a very clear way. The chiographs, there's a whole video on it that breaks out population, economic growth, the energy intensity of the economy, the carbon intensity of the economy. It's a very clear way to think about many of the drivers of energy CO2 emissions. A very helpful framework for thinking clearly about the drivers of emissions. Another tip is to tell the story of the blindfolded people and the elephant particularly in the introduction to your session, to get people in the spirit and the feeling of systems thinking. It's an ancient Indian story. You can go find it, the details online. But here's how I'll often tell it. I'll say, Once upon a time, these blindfolded people were led up to an elephant. They didn't know what it was, though. They were trying to figure out what it is. And the first person grabs its leg. The elephant is like a trunk. Someone else touches the side and says, the elephant is like a rug or the elephant is like a spear touching its tusk. An elephant is like a rope. None of them see the whole. How often, everybody, when we think about the climate, do we just think about a technology, an issue, one part of this, whether it be 
renewable energy, or agriculture, or air quality, or climate justice, or international dynamics, or coal, or oil, or population, or carbon removal, or methane. See one part and just have a conversation about that one component and fail to see the whole. Today, we're gonna do our best to see the whole, put our arms around this whole system. See the whole elephant. All right, so systems thinking in En-ROADS. Use En-ROADS as a way to help people see this complex system whole, appreciate its interdependencies, and overall work your way out of your job because when they leave your session, they're gonna be thinking with the model already. They'll never need it again. All right, hope that was helpful. Go get them.